Hello and welcome to episode 2 of the Rocket League Mac Making Tutorial Series. Today I'm going to be showing you UDK. Um, UDK is how you make everything work. How the player spawns, where you spawn the ball, how to make things rotate, whatever it is. UDK is how it's done. Blender is specifically used just for modeling the map. First thing I'm going to do is make a new map and a blank map. Um, so you can use templates in UDK. So uh, if you go to make a new map, you'll see there's actually templates here. So if I select midday lighting, you'll see that it actually comes with a pre already working skybox. Whoops. That's the wrong one. It actually has a skybox already set in and it actually has fog already put in too. Um, also I'll tell you how I turn on the fog and everything. But it, this is already, you know, good lighting. Everything's here. But, I mean, this is good. But I never use templates. I've had problems with templates crashing. If I try and reopen a map file, for example, Pachinko. So I'm going to create a new level. I'm going to go blank. Especially because I want to show you how to add skyboxes and how all this stuff works. So, first thing I'm going to do whenever I make a new map is file save as and save it as whatever you want it to name whatever you want the name to be mine's gonna be tutorial series make sure uh, make sure make sure you save it in udk custom udk game content maps make sure it's in this directory uh there's another maps directory but uh i would use this one because one i've seen everyone use especially because it's the one with the installer script that has shortcuts to the creature pc console and 252950. So I'm gonna save. Whoops. Uh, I'm gonna go back to maps and I'm gonna save the tutorial series here. And give it a second. And we're back. Okay. So, first thing navigation. Uh, to fly around, hold down right click and then hit WASD. It'll let you fly around. E to go up, U to go down, and then Z and C. So Z as in zebra to zoom out, C as in couch to zoom in. And it just changes the perspective. I usually don't mess with it, I, I usually keep it normal. But that's basic navigation WASD, QE, SZ. Um, in order to go, f in order to move the camera faster, uh, mouse wheel up. In order to m slow it down, mouse wheel down. And you can also change that by up here. You can click arrow movement. You can turn it all the way up, and then you can scroll wheel up, and it'll go really fast. I usually just leave this on the lowest possible setting, and then you scroll wheel because you're not going to really need to go that fast. It's not you're not going to make a map as big as this grid pretty much ever. So. First thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the content browser. So the content browser contains everything from a map that you need. So if we go down here, you'll actually see there's a folder or a package called tutorial series. And this is why you save as. I don't know why this stuff is in here. This is probably from the old tutorial series. All right, so I fixed it. All I did was create a new map and named it tutorial series version two. And now we have version two right here. And this is what it's going to look like. It's going to be empty with uh, some I don't know, concrete scratched detail in the back. Um, I'm going to right click on in here and click import. And we are going to go to wherever you have your model saved, which for me is projects and tutorial series. And then mine is called fullfield.fpx, open. Uh, I always leave these settings default, never messed with them. And then okay to all. If you get a warning that says no smoothing information found, that means that you forgot to, that means you need to go check your smoothing information in your export settings in Blender. But right here is our field. You can see it. If you double click on it, you can actually see it in here. And it looks really weird, but we're going to fix that when we get to UVs in episode four. But I'm going to drag this in. And here you go. Here, here's our map, right? A uh, very important thing to notice is that the pivot point is right here. Now, the pivot point is here because that's where the world origin in Blender is. 
So wherever the world origin in Blender is, depending on your mesh, that's where it's going to export. So if it put the location to 000, you see this is how it looks in Blender. So if you made an entire map in Blender, selected everything, and did 000 location, uh, that's fine. That's how you would get here. Now, uh, if you're wondering how I just changed location, hit F4, open static mesh properties. You can also go up here, static mesh properties, and there are a ton of options here. But I'm gonna go over the basic buttons and I'm going to go very quickly because I don't want this video to be 30 minutes. First thing I'm gonna talk about is that there's a link in the episode two links in the Google Drive. Um, it's going to contain what every single button does and a bunch of hotkeys in here. So it's gonna be showing you a bunch of buttons, what everything does. Uh, if you ever wanna know what anything in UK does, look up Unreal Engine 3 documentation and it should tell you what it is depending on what you're looking up. So first thing I wanna talk about is the viewports. So I'm in perspective. Down here, this is perspective. Um, if I wanna look at it from the front, here it is, the side view and the top down view. Uh, you can see that top, front, side. Um, but yeah, this is just the different views. And if you want something to, go so let's say I only want to look at the top, or I only want to look at the side and the perspective, I can drag this up, get rid of those two, and then put in side view. And right here, I can work with just these two. And if I want to bring them all back, I could just hit this maximize button, which maximizes the panel, minimize it again, and they're all back. I usually always stick in perspective. Uh, I only go here if I need to fine tune something or if I need to, you know, trying to figure out a trigger's size because it's kind of hard to figure out in here. But we'll go over trigger sizes in the next episode. So yeah, we're going to go over the buttons and we're going to go over it very quickly. If you want to know what anything does, here you go. Documentation. Okay. So first thing I want to talk about, saving options. Uh, this is save current level, save all levels. Save all writable packages. Never, ever, ever, ever hit save all levels. Only hit save current level. So right here, file. It's it's basically just these buttons that's showing you. Never, ever hit save all. Ever, 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 ever hit save all. Save current, save current level. Save all is going to overwrite the dummy assets and it's going to cause a bunch of problems. Just save current level. And there you go. Um, this is undo and redo, control Z, control Y. Um, these are the translation rotation scaling tools. So if I wanna move it over, I can do this. If I wanted to rotate it, you can hit space and then you can rotate it whatever direction you want. And you can see that up here that it changes. If I hit space again, it changes the scale. And then we can scale it up. And then if I want to do non-uniform scaling, so let's say I want to make it just bigger this way, but it's already rotated, so I want it to be bigger this way, but I want it to... Okay, so right here, if we rot rotate it... Oh, okay, it locks the local. Okay, well, that's not a very good example. There's this thing, so let's say I want to move this, but I want to move it down this way and not this way. You go up here and hit world, and it's going to change the local coordinates, or it's going to change the world's coordinates to go on the world axis rather than the local axis where it does this. And that's basically how you move stuff. Find actors. So if you want to look for something, if you have a tag, this is very useful. In order to put a tag, you can just go to properties, again, hitting F4, and then look up field or something, whatever you want to name it. And then go here, if we typed in field and then tag right here you can see our static mesh actor uh just button to open the content browser uh it's control f i always minimize it so i never use this button uh kismet which is how you make things work we'll go over that in episode six matinee again for kismet and this is changing the, this will change how far you can see. So if you see here, you drag it down, you can't see anything. The more you drag it up, the more you can see. I just leave this at max. I don't know what the point of minimizing that is. Probably if you have a worse PC, you might want to, you know, put this halfway. 
but I say that's not very useful. This is a button that's stupid. It's just, it just is. Just always keep this on. If, if it's solid blue, that means it's on. It basically just lets you select translucent materials. For some reason, this is an, I don't know why this is an option, but it is. Um, here are a bunch of building options and mobile options I've never used. And then we go to viewports, so wireframes, unlit, and we go to lit, there's no lighting, so this, this isn't going to be very useful. Again, no lighting, no lighting, no lighting, no textures, I uh, don't know, lighting, lighting, and we don't have any of that, so, you know, it's not very useful right now. This is enable game view. So what game view is going to do is it's going to, I see it as the same as detail lighting. I see it as the same exact thing. It's just G is a hotkey for it. Um, but I usually stick in detail lighting a lot when I'm making maps that with already with dummy assets already placed. You'll see that in episode four when we use textures. Locking the viewport. This will basically make it so you can't go to an actor. So if I were to right click, um, go to actor, you see it won't it won't do it. If I unlock it and then select it, it goes to it like that. If I go over here, you want to see it more drastic. Go to actor, ta-da, we're here. Okay. Um, next thing is lock selected as the camera. So if I click this and then I move, you can see that the goal is selected to where we are. And then we hit it again and it places it wherever we were looking. Um, this is not very useful for what we're doing. This is more useful for... Uh, cameras, which we'll get to in ca in the next episode when we talk about gameplay. Um, these are options for more lighting. Uh, plane of viewport, which is useless because we're doing Rocket League modding, not making you know an actual game from scratch. This is Terra Floating Copy, so if you click this, it'll make another viewport. So if you want to view this on your second monitor, it's just another viewport, but it's, you know, it's its own dock. Um, these are the different brushes. So the brush is how you make triggers. So if we were to scale this up and move it like this, and we want to make a trigger volume, we can click on the, on the volumes button and then trigger volume and then ta-da trigger volume. This button on the left is for prefabs. So if you have, if you have any prefabs saved, which I don't obviously. If you have any prefabs saved, you can select them in here, hit OK, and it'll create the brush for you. But the brush is very useful. So another useful tool for the brush is this thing called Geometry Mode. Geometry Mode lets you edit edit this however you want. So if I want to make it bigger, I want to move this side up. So now you got to, if you want to move this out, now it's a trigger for a ramp if you wanted it. So if you wanted to trigger volume again, but, uh, order. but the brush is just something fun to mess around with and you can always you can change the shape by clicking so let's move closer you can change the shape by selecting all these options on the left here and then if you right click one you can see there's a bunch of options this one will change how many how spherical it is this one changes how many sides and the outer radius. You know, it's just a bunch of options that you can change if you wanted. Um, these, this is CSG, which is basically surfaces, which is basically the worst thing ever invented. Um, never, I never use surfaces, just use Blender. Um, basically you could hit CCS add and it'll create a surface of whatever your brush shape is. And we make it bigger, subtract, we'll get rid of it. Um, I don't really get what the point of surfaces are. It's mainly for, I think, before 3D software. I wouldn't use it. Just use Blender. Viewing options. So, show selected only. Only shows the actor. Hide selected. Hides it. Show all. Bam. If I do this, invert selection, it will select these two instead of instead of the mesh. And then, if I wanted to hide these, ta-da. Show all. Ta-da. Okay. So if, let's say I'm over here, I'm working on something over here for some reason, and I want to find my brush, 
I can hit this button, go to Builder Brush. Ta-da, we're here. Let's say I'm over here and I want to quickly get to this person and I don't, you can hit home for a hotkey, but you can also just click this button. It'll go to actor for you. And that is basically everything in UDK that I explained very quickly. Yeah, everything. That's basically the basics of UDK. I know that was really quick and I tried to go quick, but uh, if this video is long, I'm sorry. And I'll see you in the next episode when I start talking about gameplay.